We're going to talk about infections of the integument system, the soft tissue musculoskeletal system. It's a, going through a basic overview of the skin you all have had before, epidermis, dermis, subcutis with all the adipose tissue in the arteries and veins and nerves are all in the under the epidermis hair follicle uh, oil gland here here's a sweat gland first is abscesses these are localized collections of pus in infected tissue it's a defense mechanism that isolates the material to one area now it's supposed to keep the systemic overall organism for getting sick but as you may well know if somebody has an abscess they probably have a really high fever and they're really sick and if you have to lance that abscess or be in the room where someone lances the abscess that pus is in that abscess under high pressure so I recommend that you pull your hair back wear your mask gloves and then leave the room but it can be really nasty and infectious okay now they can spread to other places uh, limited to the epidermis which is impetigo subcutaneous fat which is cellulitis and then necrotizing infections this is actually getting death of infected tissue interrupted blood flow and sometimes these people die like in a day or two Staphylococcal skin infections, furuncle or a boil, it's generally caused by Staphylococcus aureus, not always. Can be caused by pseudomonas in hot tubs or pools that are not adequately chlorinated. Infection starts in a hair follicle and then the collections of these little furuncles can come together and for my carbuncle this is folliculitis here pseudomonas folliculitis that when you see a rash that bad it's time to go to the doctor cellulitis is infection of the dermis it's subcutaneous tissue it can be start with a superficial skin lesion trauma you treat it with antibiotics, uh, local compresses, analgesics. Injections can also lead to this. Uh, I know of someone who's had a horrendous problem with cellulitis secondary to a subcutaneous injection. So be very careful that you do those cautiously. And some drugs just aren't made to be given subcutaneously because they're too irritating. This is showing cellulitis on the lower leg and it can enlarge and separate and it's just can require surgery impetigo or pyoderma is limited to the epidermis common in children and in people who play contact sports and some of this could be hygiene um, they play sports and swap clothes back and forth helmets can generally be treated with topical and oral antibiotics now the thing about impetigo is it can be very contagious and here's a kid that's got really bad on their face and so you go to the drop your kid off at daycare and they come home with this and then you get it and all your other kids get it so they generally they would send you home if you tried to bring a kid to school like that hopefully erysipelas uh, usually caused by group A strep uh, it's distinguished from erysipelas because it has raised advancing edges and sharp borders and that's basically the same but a little different oral antibiotics penicillins often work well on these severe cases may require intravenous antibiotics you see look at her face is just all all inflamed and infected that's got to hurt acute necrotizing fasciitis also known as flesh-eating disease and 
I was reading in your book or something. It said it's not really flesh eating. It just cuts off the circulation to the flesh and the flesh dies. But tissue necrosis, systemic toxicosis, fever, tachycardia, hypotension, mental confusion, disorientation, organ failure, pretty good mortality rate. And there was a woman who, in Thomaston, that was grandmother, relatively young grandmother, 50, I think, playing with her grandchildren and throwing a ball back and forth. And instead of catching the ball, it hit her arm. It made a little scratch. It didn't even really hurt. She didn't think anything about it. Three days later, she had died because that ball had fallen in some dirt. It was contaminated with a flesh-eating disease. Now, had she gone in and scrubbed it up and put some Neosporin and a Band-Aid on it, I, it might have prevented it. Maybe it wouldn't have, but the scrubbing would have probably done a lot of good. That's kind of how it gets. Uh, that's real bad. Acne is caused by propionobacterium acnes. Now, there's no way you can miss this on a multiple choice test. What causes acne? And you see that in the species name. It lives on fatty acids secreted by sebaceous glands. Local inflammation, folliculitis, pimples. It can cause permanent scarring. And if your kids have bad acne, really ought to treat them with antibiotics or take them to the doctor. Get something for it. Uh, tends to start at puberty because that's when they start secreting more hormones. And it tends to start, it tends to be worse in males because testosterone is a stronger stimulant for the, it's just, it's not making the acne grow, it's making you have more fat grease on your skin. Now washing the skin is nice, but we're talking about grease that's under the skin, so it's not really going to do that much. And this is showing the bacterium itself. Leprosy. Everyone knows leprosy can be fun to talk about. Mycobacterium leprae. It's an acid fast staining bacillus, and it causes nerve damage, so they lose sensation and they end up injuring themselves and they have like fingers fall off and just horrible lesions all over. The picture I have is not quite that dramatic actually, but it's pretty dramatic. Awful lesions all over this guy. And apparently there still are leper colonies. Nobody can be forced to go to one, but some people want to go to one where they'll fit in because this horrible appearance that they have this is on their face, too. They don't want to be out in public. Very difficult to treat. Interesting. It has been cultured out of the foot pads of armadillos. Another interesting fact, armadillos are actually edible. So if you decide you're going to go into the armadillo eating business, don't eat the feet. And don't touch the feet. Cook them well. And then think again. Osteomyelitis infection in the bone could be anything from mild to severe and causes destruction of bone and a failure of bone healing. Antibiotics and even surgery can be required. Warts caused by human papillomavirus. No frogs required. So my mother just knew frogs and toads. Oh man, toads, they caused and we were kind of tomboys, and we liked to catch toads and play with them. And my mother was just horrified. They cause little, small, rough tumors, hands and feet. And direct contact from one kid to the other is how you get them. Uh, there are the sexually transmitted varieties, and there is a vaccine. I think it's for under 27. You could start, I think, at age 9. It's either two or three shots. And it prevents the ones that cause cancer. Now, I had a student ask me, should I get that for my kids? Won't it encourage them to be immoral? And I said, no, they're nine years old. You take them to the doctor and you say, hey, we're getting a shot. What kind of shot? A vaccine shot. Okay. And then you take them back in three weeks. 
What are we doing? We're getting a shot. What kind of shot? A booster shot. It's not their business at the age of 9 or 10 to know the details of sexually transmitted infections. Hopefully they're not, unless they're being abused. Okay, here's some warts here. It's on the finger or on the face. Filiform wart, mosaic wart, plantar wart on the feet. Sometimes these are tough. Now, in the, we get these in cattle and horses are usually on the ears and they could just totally misshape that animal and rather than surgically remove them I was taught to actually pinch them off with hemostats and it stimulates an immune reaction. Uh, don't try this at home uh, but it needs treating. Herpes simplex painful watery blisters on skin or mucous membranes lips, mouth, and genitals. Herpes simplex 1 prefers lips, the north side uh, of the proverbial belt barrier, fever blisters, lips and mouth. Herpes simplex 2 prefers the south side of the belt barrier. Now, if someone has herpes on their mouth and lips, uh, they should not consider transferring it to another person through kisses or other things uh, because it will cross that belt barrier. Just say no. And the problem with herpes is it keeps on coming back. I had a girl who every time I gave her a test in class she got a cold sore because when you get stressed they live in the nerves and the lead to your mouth or to your genitals and when you get stressed they're not suppressed anymore and they come out. There are antiviral medications. They're ones you can put directly on a cold sore. For the genital herpes there's ones you can take continuously. Uh, there's always a problem with contagion and really really says a lot for just like never having sex ever for any reason. Of course, I have two children. I've been married 40 years. So anyway, wanted to talk here. But this is herpes simplex on the mouth. OK, and thank goodness it didn't show us the other details. Uh, I think we'll get to see those later. Herpes virus, varicella zoster virus. This is chickenpox transmitted by respiratory droplets. There is a vaccine now, but when I was a kid, the parents wanted you to get it before you went to school. So if a kid got chicken pox, they have chicken pox parties and all the kids would get together and play. And it was the only time you were allowed to share drinks and eat after each other because they were hoping you'd go on and get it and get a lifetime immunity. Now, lifetime immunity doesn't always work. One of my kids had it twice and one of them had it three times. They just missed the vaccine. Primary infection begins in the mucosa and goes out throughout the body and skin. Now, what I will mention is that my daughter did, had one little spot. I said, what's that place on you? She said, I don't know. I think a bug bit me. Sent her to school, put her on the school bus. Takes took 30 minutes to get there. So she'd probably been gone 45, what am I, an hour maybe from the house. And the principal of the school called me and chewed me out. How could you send this child to school? I said, what's wrong with her? What's wrong with her? She was covered with chicken pox by the time I got there. I mean, just a couple of hours from school bus to when I got to school or an hour and a half or whatever. So it really does spread fast. And it doesn't go away. It stays in the nerves. Uh, and I'll show you where they are actually, but it, it stays dormant and it becomes reactivated under stress, usually in older people, but it goes along the dermatomes. These are the nerves that go around to the skin and it could go you know, all the way up here. It can come down here. It could go up on the neck. Now, all the old folks that I knew grew up around, I, old folks, I mean really old because I may be old now, swore 
that if shingles went all the way around, you know, it starts in the back, comes forward, and met in the middle, you'd die, but you don't. It's just absolutely an old wives' tale. Smallpox, acute contagious disease caused by variola virus, orthopox virus, devastating, kills about 30% of the people who get it, but that was back when everybody had been exposed to it. So now that most people will have no immunity to it, it's probably going to kill a whole lot more than that, like 70, 80, 90, if there were to be a problem. Now, when I was in school, we were forced to take a vaccine. It caused a horrible lesion on your skin, and there was no choice. You couldn't go to school if you didn't take it. And my little sister's vaccine just wouldn't take it, didn't do anything. It didn't make a sore, it didn't make a problem, it just didn't work. And she finally, the doctor finally wrote a note and said, this vaccine is not going to work on this child, please let her go to school. There's nothing you can do about it if you get it, but according to this book, and this book may be a tiny bit dated, but I see no reason that they would have changed it, that the U.S. has enough vaccine for everybody in this country if we were to have smallpox outbreak. Tinnias, these are fungal infections. And, I don't know why I did that. Okay, fungal infections. Often superficially affect the outer layer of skin, nails, hair, and they live off dead keratinized cells of the epidermis. Dermatophytes are the most common, most important fungi. Tania capitis, cap, that's your scalp. Itchy red areas can leave, destroy his hair, leaves ball patches, transmitted by hats, combs, and clothing. And it can require oral fungal, antifungal medications. Dandruff is most likely a real mild, a severe dandruff is most likely a mild case of a fungus. And that's why the dandruff shampoos have antifungal medication in them. Tinea corporis, that's effect, corporis means body, affects the body anywhere, especially this not hairy. And it tends to leave rings of vessels, vesicles or with papules in the clear center. So it kind of looks like that, but the whole thing is red. And it is contagious, it's itchy, and so you scratch it and spread it. Can be spread by pets. If you go to the pound to pick out a cat, don't get the one with no hair unless it's one of those hairless cats. This itching and its hair is falling out. Get one that's actually pretty because it does spread to people. Very difficult to get rid of in the cats. It can be done uh, generally by not only topical medication, but uh, and over the counter. Forget that. You can't really give over the counter stuff to cats because they lick it and then it's toxic to them. But also by tablets. Um, I had a dog come into the clinic and it had these little round things all over it. Nice dog, it was a German Shepherd. It was unusual to have a polite, quiet German Shepherd in Bacon, Georgia, but it was. And they had been to another vet and they'd been giving it steroids over and over, said it's allergy. And I said, does he itch? And he said, no. You know, this really looks like a fungus to me. And I gave him antifungal medication, and it started clearing up. Then he came, and I said, don't let the kids play with this dog. Just keep the dog outside for a while. Well, his little girl played with it. She got ringworm, and ringworm is not caused by a worm. It's a fungus. She got ringworm, and it just got uh, all, you know, all over the little girl, and the doctor gave medication. And anyway, they both got cleared up eventually. Tinea versicolor is actually a yeast called Malesia globosa. It's found on the skin and is not contagious, usually on younger people, back, underarms, upper arms, chest, lower legs, and neck. And there are over-the-counter medications and sometimes they may have to take prescriptions or oral medications if they're severe. T. 
Titania crurus is in the groin area, jock itch. And if it's there's friction from clothes, especially the reason jock is because they, you know they're athletes, they're staying, they're sweaty, and uh, you can get it, and it causes burning sensation. Um, also, direct contact to the skin, unwashed clothing, you don't want to recycle or especially borrow someone else's underclothes. Responds generally to over-the-counter antifungals being clean, dry, and don't have tight, damp clothing on. Tenius unguium. This is um, oncomycosis. This is toenail fungus. And I saw a picture of an athlete, and I wish I remembered who it was, a basketball player. They had toenails that were like longer than the toes. And that, that's what they were infected with. There are topical medications. They don't work. There are oral medications, and they don't work. Very difficult to treat. They may return after treatment, and they're hard to trim. They get thick. This pretty bad because it can make the shoes rub on the feet. Okay, Tinea pettis. This is athlete's foot. Warm, humid environments, and there are several fungi that could cause it. Cracking, peeling, itching skin. Feels like you got little blisters and oozing, crusting stuff. It is contagious, and that's why if you go to someone else's place, and take a shower and you don't know that the bathroom's real clean, you may catch athlete's foot from them. So over-the-counter antifungal powder sprays and creams usually clear them up. Cutaneous candidiasis. This is caused by the candida albicans, the same yeast that causes the um, vaginal yeast infection. But it is on the skin and anybody who gets takes antibiotics it can cause they can it kills off all the bacteria and so yeast grow anywhere that's warm moist creased areas armpits groin uh, if people who have a lot of fat if they don't have rolls they get yeast infection in between those so if you treat patients that have obesity issues you need to be sure that you get those areas clean so they don't get infection. can infect nails, corners of mouth. Just general hygiene, keeping the skin dry, exposed to air, and then topical fungal medications. I wonder if they're advocating nudist colonies. I don't think I'd want to go to one.